Hello everyone, my name is Maroon. I'm the VP of Operations at Farhat Accounting Lectures, and I'm more than happy to guide you through basic and diluted EPS exercises. In this session, we're gonna learn two important lessons. The first one is how the issuance of convertible securities during the year will affect the computation of the basic EPS and diluted EPS. Now remember that we're gonna use the if converted method for convertible securities, which assumes that the securities were converted to common stock at the start of the period or upon the issuance date if later. The second lesson we're gonna learn is how the conversion of securities to common stock during the year will affect the computation of the basic EPS and diluted EPS. Now for the basic EPS, the additional shares are included in the WAXO and the weighted average from the date of the conversion and not from the start of the year. Because for the basic EPS, we're looking at the actual shares outstanding. We're not making any assumptions. However, for diluted EPS, we are making assumptions. We are using the if converted method, and we are gonna assume that those shares uh, were outstanding for the entire period. And any related interest expense net of tax is added back to the net income. So we're gonna make adjustments to arrive at the diluted EPS, and these adjustments are based on assumptions. These assumptions are that the convertible securities were converted at the start of the period or at the issuance date if later. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Exercise number one, we have Adam Company had revenues of 19,500 and expenses other than interest and taxes of 10,400 for 2000X1. In 2000X0, so a year before, Adam issued 60 at par, $1,000, 8% bonds, each convertible into 100 shares of common stock. So what is the total face value of these bonds? It's 60 multiplied by 1,000. We have $60,000 face value of the bonds. During 2000 X1, 2000 shares of common stock were outstanding. So it is good news here. We are provided with the WAXO. This is the WAXO that we're gonna use in the basic EPS. None of the bonds were con was converted or redeemed. So this is the assumption in this exercise. So no conversion. And the issuance date is prior to this year. It is in the previous year. So the whole bonds were still outstanding, these convertible bonds for the whole year. They were not converted into common shares. Assuming the tax rate is 20%, we're gonna use this tax rate to calculate the interest expense savings and to calculate, of course, also the taxes. Compute the basic and diluted EPS for 2000 X1. So the first step is to compute the basic EPS. The basic EPS is the income available to common shareholders, which is the net income minus preferred dividends. Here we're not provided with any information about preferred dividends. Divided by the WAXO, the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. To calculate our net income, since it is not provided, we're gonna use the information related to the income statement accounts, our revenues are 19,500, our expenses other than the interest and taxes are 10,400. So we still have to compute the interest and the taxes. 
net income equals revenues minus expenses minus interest minus taxes. The interest expense on bonds, remember this is the face value, the 60 bonds multiplied by $1,000, multiplied by the interest rate. Since the bonds were outstanding for the whole year, it's multiplied by 12 divided by 12. So the interest will, paid, will be paid on this balance for the whole year. And the interest expense is 4,800. Next, we need, we need to calculate the taxes, but before that we need to know our earnings before tax, the income before taxes, because our taxes are computed as the multiplication of earnings before taxes and the tax rate. So our earnings before taxes is the revenues minus expenses minus the interest expense, 19,500 minus 10,400 minus 4,800. My EBT earnings before tax is 4,300. 4,300 multiplied by the tax rate of 20% and my tax expense is 860. Now I can compute my net income because I need I have all the information that I need to calculate the net income, which is the earnings before taxes minus the taxes. So 4,300 minus 860, it is $3,440. So I have now my numerator, the net income is my numerator. And the WAXO, it is already provided, the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. So my basic EPS is 3,440 divided by 2,000 shares outstanding during the whole year. And my basic EPS is $1.72 per share. Next, I'm going to compute the diluted EPS. We have only one convertible security here. And we need to consider first if it is dilutive or anti-dilutive. How we're going to do that? We're going to calculate the impact on the numerator, specifically net income, because bonds affect net income through the interest expense incurred during the year. And using the, what, the if converted method, Assuming that these bonds were converted into common stock since the beginning of the year, this interest expense incurred will be saved. It will be avoided. And we need to consider the interest expense saved net of tax because the company deducted tax on the interest expense and the effect on net income was net of the, this tax, this tax saved on the interest expense. So when we're adding back the interest expense, it needs to be net of tax. So we already computed the interest expense as 4,800. We need to multiply it by one minus the tax rate, the tax rate of 20%. So 4,800 multiplied by 80%. And the net interest expense saved is 3,840. Now we need to calculate the impact on the denominator or the WAXO. The incremental shares from the conversion of the bonds, the potential conversion of the bonds, is the number of the bonds, 60 bonds. We have multiplied by 100 shares per bond because each bond may be converted into 100 shares of common stock and the potential additional shares, if converted, is... 6,000 shares. So now we can compute the ratio of the impact, which is the impact on the numerator, 3,840, 3, and the impact on the denominator, which is an additional 6,000, and the impact is $0.64. Is it more or less than the basic EPS? It is less than the basic EPS, and therefore, this convertible bond is dilutive and must be considered in the computation of the diluted EPS. So now we can compute the diluted EPS. We're going to take the basic EPS numerator, which is the net income minus preferred dividends, and add to it the interest expense saved net of tax and we're going to take the denominator of the 
basic EPS, the WAXO, and add to it the additional shares from the conversion of the bonds, assuming the bonds are converted. So the diluted EPS is the net income that we computed as 3,440. We don't have any preferred dividends. And the interest expense saved, we already computed it as 3,840. For our denominator, the wax was already given as 2,000. And we need to, to add the additional shares from the conversion of the bonds. We already computed that as 6,000. This is the effect on the denominator. So finally, our dilute, diluted EPS is 7,280 7, divided by 8,000. 8, it is $0.91. Now we're gonna look in exercise two at the same facts. We're gonna keep all the facts the same with one exception, which is the date of the issuance of the convertible bonds. So rather than considering these bonds issued in 2000 X zero, we're gonna consider them as issued on September 1st, 2000X1. So we're gonna see what will happen when the convertible securities are issued during the year and not in prior years or at the beginning of the year. First, we're gonna solve the basic EPS. The interest expense on bonds is gonna be different in this case, why? because we're gonna multiply the face value by the 8%. However, it's no longer outstanding for the whole year, this balance. It's only outstanding from September 1st. So September, October, November, December, we have four months. So we're gonna multiply by four, divide by 12. That's our interest expense. It is smaller in this case. It is the third of the interest expense that we computed uh, in exercise one, because the uh, bonds were issued on September 1st and not on January 1 or in the prior years. The, the balance was not outstanding since January 1, but since September 1st. Also, the earnings before taxes are going to be different because we're going to deduct an interest expense of 1600 and our earnings before tax are 7500 The taxes is the EBT multiplied by the tax rate. So 7500 multiplied by 20% and the taxes are 1500 The net income is the difference between the EBT and the taxes. 7,500 minus 1,500, it is 6,000. We can calculate, finally, our basic EPS by dividing the numerator, the net income of 6,000, by the WAXO. Here, our denominator is not different because no, uh, no additional shares were issued. And our basic EPS is $3 per share. Now for the computation of the diluted EPS, we're gonna consider also if the convertible security is dilutive or anti-dilutive, we're gonna see the impact on the numerator. So the interest expense here is 1600 multiplied by one minus the tax rate, multiplied by 80%, and the interest expense saved is 1,280. We're gonna calculate the impact on the denominator, the wax hope. So we have 60 bonds multiplied by 100 shares per bond. Here, remember, with the uh, if converted method, we consider that the uh, securities were converted at the beginning of the year or at the date of issuance if it is later. And here, the date of issuance is after January 1. It is in September. So this is the later date that we're gonna use as the date of the conversion. 
of these bonds. We cannot consider a bond converted before it is issued. It doesn't make sense. This assumption doesn't make sense. It needs to be converted first. Uh, it needs to be issued first, and then we can consider it converted. So that's why we're, use, we're using the date of the issuance, because it doesn't make sense to convert securities that don't exist. So 60 bonds multiplied by 100 multiplied by four from September till December divided by 12. And the incremental shares that we need to add to the Waxo is 2,000 shares. Ratio of the impact. So we have an addition to the numerator due to the interest expense net of tax saved of 1,280. And we have additional 2,000 shares to the Waxo. Our ratio is 0 0.64, which is less than the basic EPS of three. And therefore, we need to calculate the diluted EPS taking into account this convert, these convertible bonds. Now let's calculate the diluted EPS. We have the net income of 6,000. We need to add back to the numerator, the 1,280. And we need to add back to the denominator of 2,000. We need to add to it the additional shares of 2,000. Our diluted EPS is 7,280 divided by 4,000. It is $1.82. Now notice here, our diluted EPS is different from the first question. Why? Because we are using different, a different assumption here because the date of the issuance of the convertible securities was different. Next, in exercise three, we're also going to have a different assumption. All the facts are the same, except that 20 of the 60 bonds were converted on October 1st, 2000X1. So here, the date of issuance is in a prior year, like exercise one. However, this is the additional information related to the conversion of 20, 20 bonds. So how many common stock or common shares have been issued on October 1st, 2000X1, it's 20 multiplied by uh, each convertible, each bond is convertible into 100 shares. So we're gonna multiply by 100 and we have 2000 shares that's gonna be issued on October 1st. These shares will be taken into account in the computation of bo both the basic EPS and the diluted EPS. Why? Because they are actual and not based on assumptions. They are not if converted. They are actual shares. And you always take the actual shares into account in the computation of the basic EPS. So let's compute the basic EPS. Now here for the computation of the interest expense, we're gonna look at the interest expense on bonds from 1-1 till September 30. And why is that? Because we had 60 bonds outstanding until September 30. Multiplied the $1,000 of face value, we had $60,000 of balance in our bonds account. We're gonna multiply it by the interest rate of 8% and the number of months this balance was outstanding, which is nine divided by 12. So from January to September, we have nine months. And the interest expense from 1-1 one, one till 9-30 is 3,600. The interest expense on bonds from October 1st till December 31st, we still have 40 bonds only. Why? Because 20 bonds were converted into common stock. They no longer exist. So the balance in the bond account, the bonds payable account have been reduced to 40,000 on October 1st, 40,000 multiplied by 8%, multiplied by the three months, October, November, December, divided by 12, we have here an interest expense of 800.
so the total interest expense for the year is 3600 plus the 800 and it is 4400 dollar that's the total interest expense it is 400 lower 400 dollar lower than the interest expense computed in exercise 1 why because we have 20 bonds so 20 bonds that were converted they have a value of $20,000 multiplied by 8% multiplied by 3 over 12 this is the interest expense that the company saved it is actually saved so 20,000 multiplied by 8% by 3 divided by 12 is $400 so the company saved $400 by uh, converting these bonds to common stock. It no longer ha has to incur this $400 during the year 2000X1. Now the earnings before tax, we need to compute, to need to deduct the 4400, the interest expense, and the EBT is 4700. For the taxes, it is the 4,700 multiplied by the 20%, and the taxes are 940. For our net income, it is 4,700 minus 940. It is 3,760. Now for the WAXO here, it's different. Why? It's no longer only 2,000 shares, because we have additional shares issued on October 1st from the conversion of the bonds. It is an actual conversion and it's not an assumption. So these bonds were outstanding during the year and they were outstanding from October till December. So here in this case, I'm going to take these are the changes. Here I'm dealing with the changes and these changes were outstanding for three months during the year from October 1st till December 31st. So I'm going to multiply by three divided by 12. And the beginning balance, it's outstanding for the whole year. So here I'm dealing with the changes. This method deals with the changes and not with the outstanding balance. Also, you can use the outstanding balance to compute the WAXO by computing the 2,000 shares multiplied by 9 divided by 12. If you're applying this method that deals with the outstanding balances, this is what you would do. And then you're going to take the new balance. You're going to compute the new balance, which is the 4,000 shares on October 1st, and multiply it by the remaining period of the year, multiplied by 3 divided by 12. And you're going to get the same re result. So you're going to add those two figures together and arrive at 2,500 shares. But personally, I prefer to deal with the changes. It's much easier because you don't need to have to compute uh, the balance at each step. All you need to do is to take the changes. So we had 2,000 shares at the beginning of the year. We're going to multiply them always by 12 divided by 12. We're going to take the beginning balance as it is. And then we're going to look at our changes. So we have additional 2,000 shares. And we're going to see the remaining period of the year. So we have October, November, December, multiplied by 3 divided by 12. Add those two numbers together. So 2,000 divided by 4 here. It's 500. 2,000 plus 500 is 2,500. Finally, the basic EPS is our net income. So it is here. 3,760 divided by our WAXO, 2,500. It is $1.504 per share. Now for the computation of the diluted EPS, we're going to see the impact on the numerator. The interest expense saved net of tax is the 4,400 computed earlier, multiplied by 80%. We have 3,520. We're going to calculate the impact on the den denominator. And here also we have two steps. Why? Because 
here with the diluted EPS, we always gonna assume that the uh, convertible securities are converted from the beginning of the period or the date of the issuance if later. So here the date of the issuance is before, it's not later. So we're gonna assume that they have been converted since the beginning of the period. So from 1-1, one, one, from January 1st until September 30, these 60 bonds multiplied by the 100 shares per bond, they were not included in the equity section because actually they were, they were not converted. They were still convertible bonds. So we're gonna take these uh, 6,000 shares or potentially converted shares and multiply them by nine divided by 12 for the period until September 30. This is an addition to the WAXO because these potentially converted shares were not added to the WAXO of the basic EPS. So we're gonna assume that the conversion happened since the beginning of the year and it affected all the bonds and not a partial conversion like what happened actually from October 1st. What happened actually is 20 bonds only were, were converted and only the shares related to the conversion of the, these 20 bonds were added to the basic EPS. So we're gonna add also the assumption, this is the assumption that the remaining 40 bonds were also converted during this period from October till December. So 4,000 shares were, convert, were assumed to be converted, multiplied by three divided by 12. We have an addition also of 1,000 shares. So we're gonna add to the WAXO, to the denominator, 4,500 plus 1,000, it's 5,500. So for the computation of the diluted EPS, we have the net income. We're gonna add to it the interest expense saved. We have the WAXO of 2,500. We're gonna add to it the 5,500 of additional shares. The diluted EPS is 7,280 divided by 8,000. It's $0.91. Finally, we're gonna take a look at the summary of the computation of the basic EPS and the diluted EPS in exercises one, two, and three. Starting from the basic EPS, which is net income divided by WAXO. Net income in exercise two was different. Why? Because the date of the issuance of the convertible bonds was September 1st and not January 1. So the interest expense was lower and the net income was higher. In exercise three, there were savings on the interest expense from the conversion of the 20 bonds multiplied by their face value of 1,000 multiplied by 8% multiplied by 3 over 12 from October to December, multiplied by one minus the tax rates. This was the interest expense savings from the conversion. And that's why we have a higher net income. The wax was no different in exercise two because there was no addition of any uh, additional shares of common stock. But for exercise three, we had an additional 500 shares, why? Because 20 bonds were converted and each bond was converted into 100 shares of common stock. And this conversion is considered for the last three months of the year from October till December, which led to additional WAXO, to the addition to the WAXO of 500 and the waxo was 2500 and this was the reason that the basic eps was lower now for the interest expense saved it is in added to the net income and in the computation of the diluted eps numerator so the diluted eps numerator is net income plus interest expense saved and for the additional shares 
they are based on the diluted EPS denominator. Now, if you look at the diluted EPS denominator in exercise one and three, they are the same. And why is that? Because we are using the same assumption. The actual conversion of these 500 shares doesn't affect the amount of, or the value of the diluted EPS denominator. Why is that? Because it's still the same assumption that we have converted all the 60 bonds into, one, into 100 shares each and for the whole year. So we're always gonna add 6,000, regardless of whether of the number of uh, convertible securities that were actually converted during the year. But what could affect the value of the diluted EPS denominator is the date of the issuance. Because if it is later than the beginning of the year, we're gonna use that date in our assumption and assuming that the convertible securities were converted on that date, which in our case was September 1st. So the 60 bonds were considered to be con converted into 100 shares each on September 1st. And this conversion is considered from four, from September 1st until December 31st, four months out of 12 and said 12 out of 12. So it's like dividing this amount by three, four out of 12 is one over three. So here in our denominator is the same, but just adjustments are different because the basic EPS, the wax of the basic EPS, it's gonna be different when there is a conversion of convertible securities into common stock. Remember for the basic EPS, we're gonna take the actual wax, no assumptions here. And for the diluted EPS denominator, it's always going to be based on assumptions, taking into account the worst case scenario. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look for additional resources to help you with your CPA exam preparation or accounting exam preparation. Thank you for watching and happy studying.